Thanks for checking out this haul video. So let's get into what I bought additional for the Vinegar Center Black Friday sale of 2023 because I already did a video, if people haven't seen it, of the their new November releases and what I got during the sale for that. So this is the rest of the stuff that I decided to purchase. Obviously, there's a shirt on there. There's some slip covers that I used my Vinegar Center Media Club points for. And there's a bunch of other movies. Some people can probably guess what at least this one is down here based off the coloration of it. But we're going to get into this. Let's do it. So the shirt first. Uh, and then obviously, like I always do, I have what I'm least excited about on the top and what I'm most excited about on the bottom. So we're going to go through it that way. So I've been eyeing this shirt up for a bit now. And there's two different versions of it. There's a silver and a gold. I don't really think the gold looks as good as the silver. So I went with the silver. And that is this kind of like death metal satanic film vinegar syndrome logo. Uh, I really like this. Plus the shirt feels um, very nice and soft. Actually, it's funny because the exact same sh uh, shirt company, this canvas that does it, this shirt is the same is the same company. Uh, my wife actually got this for me. This early Christmas present. I'm a squirrel guy. She's like, you needed a shirt of a squirrel shredding on a guitar. I was like. I mean, obviously. <laughs> so yeah, so really love this design. Glad to finally have a Vinegar Syndrome shirt. So excited about that. Then I made a mistake. I got myself the uninvited um, slipcover. I already have it. So I have an, an extra uninvited slipcover, as you can see. Um, so I'll probably be storing this somewhere until maybe I try and sell it. When I start selling some Vinegar Syndromes I don't want, not anytime soon, but you know, or if my buddy Rich gets this movie and really likes it, I'll just give this to him. That's another option. So then I all, well, first of all, before I show you, cause I got multiple slip covers with my media club points, but here's the thing. You can only get one item with your media club per purchased. So what you can do though, is what I did, which is just purchase a movie or two and get your item. If you have enough points and then immediately afterwards, purchase, uh, make a separate purchase, purchasing another item or two, and then get use your media club points and so on and so on. So, and you can add to your order, so you don't have to pay extra shipping. So that's always nice. Uh, so then I got Night Train to Terror. Um, this is one that I got a while ago. I still haven't watched it yet. When I do, I'll still be doing my short uh, movie review video, which. All the movies you're going to see me revealing here, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do those 60-second or less short film review uh, videos, so you can look for that if you're interested. Then the next one is a movie um, I do have a short review already done of. I haven't put it out yet, but I really like this movie. Uh, Incubus. This one really surprised me. This is actually one of the really good kind of underrated ones, in my opinion, that Vinegar Syndrome's put out. So I'm really glad to finally have a slipcover for it because I am 100% keeping this one. And the slipcover looks really good. And then one of my favorite uh, Vinegar Syndrome releases, I had never gotten it with a slipcover. And I was really sad about that because um, it was like when I was kind of new to Vinegar Syndrome and I'd seen this movie on Shudder and I was like, oh my gosh, this movie, it's like so bad, it's good, amazing. And that's Mausoleum. So I'm so, so, so excited to have a Mausoleum slipcover finally because I love, I adore this film. I literally, for me personally, this is the best so bad, it's good 80s film ever for me personally. If you haven't seen Mausoleum, Ridiculous. Okay, so now getting into the actual movies. I do have one more slipcover coming up later, but it's for a movie that I also purchased, so I will talk about it then. Uh, so least least excited about to most excited about. The le one I'm least excited about, but still excited about, obviously, because I purchased it, is Invisible Maniac, and they still have slipcovers of it, which it's been out for a bit. I'm kind of surprised they still have it. But yeah, Invisible Maniac, it looks like a decent time. There's that, there's that. Obviously, I'll read about it on the inside. All right, no nudity, <laughs> that's fine, there's that. It just looks ridiculous to me, and the inside's like the same. Uh, but let's read about it. Ever since he was a child, Kevin Dornwinkle, that's a name, uh, wanted nothing more than the ability to spy on naked women. Traumatized for life when his prudish mother discovers his bedroom telescope pointed at the window of a nude and nubile neighbor, Kevin puts all his focus onto his other interest, science. 
Decades later, and now a respected physicist, Dr. Dornwinkle has made his greatest discovery yet, Molecular Reorganization Serum, which has the power to turn a person invisible. Go figure. But after a demonstration to his peers fails horribly, the mild-mannered doctor suffers a breakdown, focusing all his efforts on perfecting his serum and succeeding the now fully unhinged Dornwinkle gets a job as a high school teacher and embarks on a rampage of molestation and murder. This, this is an Adam Rifkin film, which I haven't seen any Adam Rifkin films. I've seen some people talk about his films, and this will be my first one. So I'll get to it at some point. Excited to check it out. Then the next one is was recommended to me online by someone in one of the Vinegar Syndrome groups I'm in, and that is Berserker. Uh, it's a bear attack movie. I'm a fan of like Jaws ripoff films, so this seems like maybe it's kind of that, and I think the person that said it kind of was, so I'm very much interested in Berserker. Um, and that's the inside of it, and let's see. What? It's literally the exact same on the inside. What is the point of that? Oh, oh, the screaming, the screaming person. That's the difference. Okay, got it. Very odd. Not a great cover, but <clears throat> okay. Berserker. A group of friends have set out on a camping trip in a rural part of Utah. Although warned by kindly Norwegian immigrant Pappy Nyquist, <laughs> nice, of a series of recent killings, supposedly the result of a bear, the campers are undeterred and decide to spend the night outdoors getting drunk and sharing stories of berserkers, ruthlessly violent Viking warriors who wore bearskins and snouts. Not long after bearing, uh, pairing off for romantic escapades, because why not, they find themselves terrorized and ripped apart by a large and violent bear. But is it actually a bear or perhaps a real-life berserker who has somewhat, somehow been transported to the 20th century? These are questions. Sounds fun, looks fun, I'm all about this one. Then the next one is one I've already seen before. I watched it on Shudder, and this is also the one that I bought a slipcover for. And that is, um, I'll show you the slipcover first. That is uh, Beyond the Door 3, which, by the way, if you haven't seen Beyond the Door, the first one, it's like literally a ridiculous Italian exorcist ripoff that's a lot of fun, and it's definitely a so bad it's good. This movie has a lot of so bad it's good uh, elements to it, and it's a lot of fun. Um, also, the slipcover is pretty dope. I like that a lot. But then here's the Amok Train is the other title or one of the other titles i suppose and then on the inside it looks like the same stuff so beyond the door three shy american college co-ed beverly putnick has been invited to to go to, on a class trip to a remote part of yugoslavia to witness and take part in an ancient cultural rite but what beverly doesn't know is that she's actually being lured to europe in order to be made the bride of satan yeah <laughs> surprise Narrowly escaping from the clutches of a witch, Beverly and her classmates take refuge on a train. Unfortunately, black magic meets them at every turn as the train becomes possessed and begins offing them one by one. This one I do highly recommend. It is wild. So many things come out of left field. It's like, it's definitely is so bad it's good, but it also has really cool practical effects and it is just out there. If it sounds fun to you, definitely watch it. Beyond the Door 3. Uh, oh, and I think Joe Bob Briggs, yeah, Joe Bob Briggs had, had shown it on um, on The Last Drive-In. That's how I saw it. Now, um, the next one is a type of film that is not for everyone, but it is Pandemonium. So I've heard this is kind of one of those like horror comedies that's kind of like really wild and over the top. So I am really into those, kind of like in the vein of something like a Surf 2 or Wacko, which are other ones that were put out by Vinegar Syndrome. I mean, you can just tell by that cover art. Like, it's, it, it looks like that style. So, Ben wanting to pick this up. In 1963, a group of college cheerleading students were brutally slain by a mysterious killer, resulting in the closure of the school they attended. Now, former student and professional cheerleader Bambi has decided to reopen the institution. As new students arrive, it's not long before the murderer makes his presence known and the bloody hijinks resume. Even worse, the only hope of unmasking the culprit falls upon an overworked Canadian Mountie. Sounds like a good time. I like these types of ridiculous, over-the-top horror comedies, so very excited to get into Pandemonium. Uh, a few, Just a few left. Three more releases left here. 
So this was one that's been on my list for a while, uh, and it started to sell really fast uh, during the sale because I believe this was the first time during their Black Friday sale that it, that this particular one uh, and the one after it um, are were actually like on sale on sale, and that is Freeway. Um, this is a fun one. This is another one I've already seen before. It is pretty wild. Kiefer Sutherland, Reese Witherspoon. It's kind of like a messed up fairy tale. It's done by, I believe, Matthew Bright, who does some pretty wild stuff. And it is, it's fun. It's a really wild ride. I mean, look at that stuff. That's pretty wild It's in itself. Uh, this is a 4K. This is one that I watched on Shudder when it was dropped on there. There's nothing on the back. And, uh, yeah, same in here. Really enjoyed it. So let me read this to you. Vanessa Lutz's life is a mess. Her mother, a prostitute, and father, an abusive drunk, have been hauled off to jail. With nowhere to live, Vanessa has no choice but to move in with her with her grandmother. Hitting the road to Granny's house, she quickly encounters the silver-tongued Bob Wolverton, who offers to give her a lift. However, what Vanessa doesn't realize is that Bob is the notorious I-5 killer, a vicious murderer who preys on young female hitchhikers and soon finds herself face-to-face -face with a real big bad wolf. Using all her wits, she sets in motion a cunning trap which all comes to a grisly head in this modern tale on Little Red Riding Hood. That's the thing, is like this movie and Freeway 2 are both like real life, really wild, like over the top, um, almost like ridiculous to the point of being comedic takes on old school fairy tales. Um, and it's fun. It's just like a, a thrill ride, basically. So I do recommend Freeway. It is pretty wild. It's pretty out there and it's fun. And this is a 4K, which is cool. So then, as you would assume, since I got Freeway, I had to also get Freeway 2, Confessions of a Trick Baby. And yes, the Confessions of a Trick Baby part is the most important part. Not really. But <laughs> um, this one, okay, I mean, that has a significance that you'll probably understand when I read it to you. But this one, as much as I do like Freeway, Freeway 2 way better in my opinion. It is way more over the top. It is way more left field with all the things that happen in it. It is so ridiculous and out there. And I saw this movie on Tubi a while ago, at least maybe more than six months ago at this point, and just fell in love with it for how stupid and ridiculous it is. Plus it has Natasha Leone in it, um, or Natasha Leone, which is great, and Vincent Gallo. Um, there's Freeway 2, Confessions of a Trick Baby. Inside, same stuff. Here we go. White Girl is a twisted teenage... Yeah, that's her name, by the way. <laughs> White Girl is a twisted teenage prostitute with a bad attitude and a nasty eating disorder who's been sent to the slammer for 25 years. Her cellmate, Cyclona, is equally deranged, being a vicious killer. And as like minds attract, the two are quick to form a truly twisted alliance. When the opportunity arises, White Girl and Cyclona manage to escape from the pen and embark on a non-stop orgy of violence and debauchery, all while hoping to make it across the border into Mexico in order to seek refuge with Cyclona's proxy caretaker, Sister Gomez. However, there's a big hitch in their plans as the good sister isn't as she seems. Lots of fun, highly recommend. There's a very ridiculous over-the-top puke scene in it, uh, which I always find funny. I don't know, there's some reason that I find like puke scenes really funny, like over the top. It's not as fun as the puke scene from Guesthouse Paradiso, which by the way, if you don't have that one, pick that one up with Simon Pegg in it. But yeah, it's got, it's fun. And then this brings me to my last one, and this is a box set. This is obviously what I'm most excited for because I'm doing it last, uh, mainly because of one of the films in the box set, but that is the Made in Hong Kong I, do they have a, yes, they have volume one on this, so hopefully there's another volume coming because they've been putting a lot of good Hong Kong stuff out through Vinegar Syndrome. I'm going to turn this around, but I have to cover this portion because there's nipples, but yeah, uh, that's the back of it. There is a booklet in here. Can I flip through it? Yes, I can flip through it. <laughs> I don't see any nudity there. Okay, so there's the booklet. And then on the inside, we have this. I don't, I, I will say that I don't like how there's like so much red on these art pieces. I wish there was a little more contrast. 
I mean, again, there's like more, like it's different, but it's also just like fully red for the most part. It's not a fan of that. And then on the inside. All right, so there's three films in here. Many countries have their own signature style when it comes to making genre films, and Hong Kong is no exception. Category 3, or Cat 3 Films, um, a ratings classification denoting a film's more extreme content, are unique films that push the boundaries of what is considered acceptable content. Beyond just the more extreme content, what sets these genre films apart from others is that they are made with the support of major studios, star popular actors, and are more accepted by the mainstream public. Contained in this set are three great examples of the types of genre films Hong Kong has become known for. While not technically all Cat 3, they are excellent representations of the lines that Hong Kong genre films are willing to cross. So the first film is from 1998. It's called The Demon's Baby. And th that is the primary reason I got this, because I've seen some reviews of this box set, and people all rave about how fun and ridiculous and over-the-top and zany The Demon's Baby is, so I need it. Um, so yeah, from 1998, The Demon's Baby. Legend has it, many years ago, five evil spirits were trapped inside ornate jars and sealed in the mountains to protect humanity from destruction. However, when a power-hungry ruler searching for treasure raids the secret chamber that houses these jars, he brings them home to his five wives along with the other riches he uncovers. Unaware of the power contained in these jars, things take an unexpected turn when the jars are accidentally opened and the ruler's five wives all become impregnated with evil fetuses hungry for human flesh. You see why I need this? <laughs> it is up to the palace's cook his second, his secret girlfriend and a local Taoist priest to stop these man-eating babies before they escape and destroy the world. I've heard there's some really wild stuff in this, so I'm very excited about that. Then the next one literally is called Erotic Nightmare. It's from 1999. Sexually frustrated due to his wife's medical condition, Yep finds himself preoccupied with dreaming about erotic encounters with beautiful women. Thanks to a chance encounter, Yep meets a modern-day sorcerer who promises to give him erotic dreams beyond his wildest imag imagination. Uh, yep, can't help but take up the man's intriguing proposition, and at first is very satisfied with the arrangement. However, Yep soon discovers that these dreams come with a price, and he must find a way to free himself of the sorcerer's spell before it's too late. That one does sound fun, and people have said it's solid. And then the last one is called The Deadly Camp, also from 1999. A group of friends take a boat to a remote island to camp out and party for a few days. After arriving on the island, they soon discover that the people they were there to meet seem to have gone missing. What's even more concerning is that the group of friends stumble across another group of campers who are also on the island to look for their missing friends too. After learning that the island is riddled with deadly traps, things take an even more extreme turn for the campers when they find themselves being stalked and killed by a bandage maniac wielding a chainsaw. Sounds very fun. Sounds very ridiculous. I'm in. So you can probably understand why this was the one that I wanted to reveal last because it sounds like a great time. So this is where I want to ask you, what have you picked up recently? Go ahead and put it down in the comments. I'd like to talk about it, uh, even if it's not Vinegar Syndrome. Or also if you want to comment on any of these things that I picked up and if you think you know, I should be excited about it or not whatever. Um, your opinion is your opinion. So thank you for checking this out. Do me a favor and hit subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. That is the best way to repay me for all this free content I'm putting out. I really do appreciate that. You can also thumbs up on this video or any video that you end up liking even a little bit because that helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. And also hit the notification bell button because then you will know when I'm putting up new videos, which I'm doing a lot. I appreciate everyone's support. Thank you for watching this video. And until next time, Keep it brutal.